Good morning, my little Halloween decoration. My little kitty witty. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, my love. Oh, you're so precious. Sirius says, Good morning, vlog. <laughs> It is a hot, hot day here in LA. Hey angels, how is everybody doing today? I am doing fine, I think. I, you know, wanted to discuss with you guys a little bit where I'm at currently in my life and in my creativity, which are so interwoven at this point. Honestly, every time I have a creative crisis, it's feeling like I'm having a life crisis. Caleb's gonna take me out to a coffee shop today to just sit and unplug and hopefully get some writing done. I've recently been going through a creative block and I kind of want to explain why and what I need to do in order to get through it because it's starting to drive me a little bananas. It's driving me insane because I have so many ideas but I'm having a really hard time bringing them down to earth and I think it's because I've subconsciously decided that I'm going to start the process of writing my book. I haven't officially started yet. Obviously I have a lot of poems in my archives and I have plenty of ideas but I want it to be executed a certain way. I want it to look a certain way. I want certain things to be in the book and I've had the ideas bouncing around in my head but every time I try to sit at the computer or sit at my journal and write them down it's like they leave my brain. It's like my my brain literally goes on freeze mode and it's really made it impossible for me to get any writing done at all which has been really really frustrating and I think it comes from a few places like for example feeling inadequate like I don't feel good enough to write a book I don't feel like you know I'm qualified to write a book so I think it's a lot of subconscious fear of not being good enough that's stopping me um, and I also think it's you know the overwhelm of choice like having so many things that I want to do with it that I don't really know where to start and it's caused a full creative block for me and it's starting to trickle into every area of my life including my YouTube channel it's like I'm I, I'm frozen. I feel a bit frozen. But basically, I just wanted to go out today and go to some favorite places. I tend to be very inspired by the places around me and I, I don't know, we're gonna go to Venice today, go to a coffee shop. I'm gonna try to just sit and write something and see what happens and I don't know. I'm just being brutally honest with you guys and know that I really want to write this book more than anything. I really want to get this done. I want to start the process. I want to ground all of my fantastical ideas and I want to be good enough and I want the book to be something that lasts beyond me even after I'm dead <laughs> you know I do be thinking that way sometimes I'm just a bit of an existentialist but I think we're gonna go to Minetti's in Venice which is a nice little coffee shop and then go around the Venice canals <sighs> let me know if any of you in the comments have ever had something like this where your own fear of failure and your own fear of <laughs> not being good enough literally makes it impossible for you to pick up the freaking pen. Yeah, anyways, subconscious decisions to write a book equals existential crises. lavender and honey and lavender lattes are my absolute favorite next to dirty chai lattes but this coffee shop is solid there's so many coffee shops we still haven't tried in the LA area so I'm slowly but surely making my way through all of them I 
I've been procrastinating writing my book for ages because it's so much more than just writing. There is an unavoidable healing that must take place. My fear of inadequacy is constantly looming, its voice louder than any of yours. This is a project that must happen in this lifetime. I won't ever give up on it, so you could really just say that my insecurity is just delaying the inevitable. Due to this part of myself I'd rather not acknowledge, writing a book has always seemed too big for me. But what if it didn't have to be? What if I just decided to meet myself right here with grace in this beautiful stage of my life? What if I wrote even if it was bad? What if as a result I could write my way into my magnum opus? What if I just let go? What if I just sat back and went with the flow of life? I want to tell you all a little story. Something special happened to me recently and it feels like the catalytic event that might finally get this book started and my journey ignited. I happened to receive a completely free tarot reading from a well-rated, well-known healer. It definitely felt like I was supposed to meet her. She didn't know me at all, but she read me like my whole heart was on display. She informed me that my career will shift more to writing in six months' time. Now, that excited me so much that tears sprung to my eyes and I gasped so loud I think I startled her. And from that moment forward, I knew it was time. This reading took place only a month ago, but the endless thoughts of when should I begin started to creep in and now it is taking up so much space I'm frozen in place and my hands can't move and I feel like there's so much to prove. Sometimes I suffer from imposter syndrome. I feel unqualified and saying it aloud horrifies me, but it's the ugly truth of not feeling good enough or smart enough or old enough like you're lacking experience. I haven't read enough books, I haven't written enough poems, I haven't had enough relationships, I haven't seen enough places. Someone out there has all these things, so why don't they just write it instead of me? I fear my life is too boring. I fear no one will care. I'm scared critics will get a hold of me and pin my naivety against me. These intrusive thoughts have plagued me since the day I got that reading, and my writing has slowed down a lot since. I'm learning to be okay with it. When I perceive my life as unworthy of a story, I remember what Sylvia Plath once said. Everything in life is writable about if you have the outgoing guts to do it and the imagination to improvise. The worst enemy to creativity is self-doubt. And she was right. I am my own biggest enemy and the only one who can ultimately free myself. I just had this lovely old woman come up to me and tell me that I look like Hope Sandoval from Mazzy Star. And I was like, that's one of my favorite bands of all time. I'll take that compliment. I'll Is take it. it. Singer? Yeah. It's me, Hope Sandoval. Excuse me, miss, what are you listening to? Venice Bitch by Lana Del Rey. I'm hoping that my hot girl walk here at Venice is going to help my creativity but so far nothing no thoughts head completely empty but it's fine mother is mothering we decided to come to the Marina Del Rey. We decided to come to Mother's Beach. Yeah, we're at Mom's Beach, but... We decided to come to the Marina Del Rey for sunset because 
This is one of my favorite, most peaceful places in LA, but I think it's so funny that it's called Mother's Beach and it's like Marina Del Rey, so it's like, mother. <laughs> Love you. I automatically feel so at peace here on the beach. Something about the water just brings me the utmost amount of peace. The vibrant bay of Marina Del Rey. You know, autumn is approaching and I'm excited for the autumn, but at the same time, I'm like really gonna miss my California summer. You know, I'm sad to say that my creative block didn't really get unblocked today despite my best efforts. And you know, I'm in a state of acceptance. That's okay, you know trying to meet myself with gentleness. You're not a machine, you're a person, and you know, just because you're not creative every second of the day or in every phase of your life does not mean you're not an artist. Simply walking around your favorite places and appreciating the things around you is in and of itself art. You know, that was something I accomplished today. And now I'm just gonna enjoy the sun and watch it as it sets. I might listen to some of my favorite music or some of my favorite poems, spoken word poetry, and smoke some weed. <laughs> That's it. Peace out, much love, love and light. Everything's gonna be all right. I literally just got done crying to Freya Haley's new YouTube video of her van lifing around Scotland and I cried. If you don't know Freya Haley, uh, please go watch her videos and support her. She's incredible. One of my favorite YouTubers, absolutely. My writer's block is obviously plaguing me. That's what this whole video has been about and I feel like I just need a soul retreat, especially after watching that video. I just feel like I need to get out of here <laughs> get out of here get out of my head you know i've been toying with the idea of going camping in joshua tree but i'm about to just say fuck it and book this trip right now i found this airbnb that is like a tent okay but it's like it's like fancy and it's like cool and it's actually relatively cheap so i'm gonna book that for the end of september and me and caleb are gonna go camping <laughs> i'm going to go out there to do nothing but create. This is like a writing retreat, art retreat, Carissa, don't go on social media, get out of your head, retreat. I'm gonna take advantage and go out there for two nights and connect with nature, first of all, because I feel like that is inherently going to help my creative blocks so much. But I'm also going to just write and create and vlog. Just literally be in solitude in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but I'm booking that shit right now. I got my wallet. Get me out of here. I love it here. I love it here. Don't get me wrong. LA, I love you. But I really just need to be out there one with nature, babes. Okay, I have it booked. I have it done. It's done. We're going to Joshua Tree. We're going to Joshua Tree to go camping. Anyways, I'm going to go to Trader Joe's and get some ice cream and just snack myself to sleep <laughs> but i love you guys and i hope you have a great rest of your night bye